right, we're back. Uh, it's another edition of the FIU Athletics Pod, uh, brought to you by Cafe Bustello. Got a new sponsor in there. Great to have Cafe Bustello on board the, the FIU Athletics Podcast. Uh, Brent Renner is in the building. He is he is logged on to Zoom uh, and joining us for some fun on the pod. Brent, uh, of course, the cornerbacks coach and recruiting coordinator for us at FIU. Formerly the All ACC quarterback at UNC and a preseason hero for the Baltimore Ravens on a bootleg for the ages. Uh, so, Brent, thanks for coming on the pod. Uh, football's getting a little bit closer. How are you, buddy? How you doing? I'm doing great, AJ. Always great to be with you. You know that. So, appreciate you having me. No, of course. Thanks for coming on. Uh, my first impression of Bryn Renner, uh, my first impression of you was – about eight years back, uh, October 13th, 2012. Uh, okay. You were, you were in Miami gardens. It was, uh, you got, you guys are playing my alma mater. Uh, you went 25 mm-hmm. for 40 for 214 mm-hmm. yards. I was, my first impression was of annoyance uh, of you. <laughs> and Giovanni <laughs> Bernard, I think had a little bit better of a game, but you came in and got a oh w. My so I wasn't, I wasn't the biggest fan of you uh, originally. I just wanted yeah. to know that. <laughs> You know, it's it's sad when you're a rusty, washed-up quarterback that the only play you remember is they ran drop eight on about the two-yard line, and my receiver had a whip route, and he didn't come underneath the linebacker. He went over yeah. top, and I threw a pick right to the linebacker, and I got smoked. And I remember Al Golden, like, looking at me, and I'm like, this is going to be – might be a long day. And then Gio <laughs> – I didn't, all I had to do was – my whole career was just, just hand it to yeah. Gio and get out of the way and give it to Ebron and, and let those yep. guys play. But, no, that was, that was a good day. It was a good victory. Yeah, always, that was always good beating the Canes. <laughs> no, Sorry, yeah, to this, to, no, to this day, no, we can we can agree on that, especially uh, especially last season. But that was uh, that was my yeah. first impression. And uh, since then, uh, we've had some mutual friends, and, and we know about that, and, and mm-hmm. gotten to know you, you much more. And you know, you you had a great career at Carolina. You know, you were just the second player in, in UNC history to throw for three thousand yards in a season. There, you did it twice. Uh, so we'll we'll talk all about that. But but first, mm-hmm. present day. Uh, look, we're getting closer. Lynchburg's just a couple of weeks away. Uh, it's still up in the air if we'll get a game in before that or not, because obviously our first two weeks were postponed, and then Old Dominion's not playing this season. So we'll see if we get something in before Lynchburg or not. But it, it's getting closer. You know, fingers are crossed. But, I mean, whatever happens, whatever stress comes from the adversity of a football game, you know, I think we'll be welcome after a spring and summer full of question marks, full of uncertainty. I'd rather deal with a difficult call on whether to go for it on fourth down uh, rather than any more difficult debates on if we're going to play football or not. I know you guys and the staff are are on the same page with that. Yeah. Um, You know, this, like you said, everyone knows kind of the, the, uh, you know, the the struggles and and tribulations we've had, you know, as, as a country, but let alone a football program. But I was telling you before I came on air, our kids are so excited um, just to go to practice. And I think that's what's special about, you know, having that time off, it's, it's, you really do miss football and you want to do the right things, obviously, that are, that are you know, for the betterment of the kids and, the, and their families and the program. But yeah. to be able to go to practice and, and to do, you know, to, to play football has been awesome for our kids. And like I told you, I said, we're living day by day. And anytime we can run out on the field, it's, it's a blessing. And, and if we keep our head down and hopefully stay disciplined in, in the things that we're supposed to do, uh, we, can, we can play some football because I know it's kind of what everybody needs and everybody wants right now. Yeah, everyone had to get creative with the workouts they were doing this summer. Uh, you guys had to get creative with just communication with, with the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Bringing guys together, the Zoom calls, and, and hoping mm-hmm. they'd be able to find a way to work out. But despite all mm-hmm. of that, look, there was still a lot of, of, of time to reset mm-hmm. th- this summer. and yes. <laughs> Enjoy yourself. I, mm-hmm. When we had our weekly Zooms with Butch, you know, it always preceded, you know, him – firing up the grill on a Friday yes. afternoon and enjoying oh, yeah. some time grill. over on the West coast of Florida. I know mm-hmm. uh, following your, your, your IG stories, you had wonderful, uh, you had a plenty of time to get out on the links, to get out on the golf course. Yes. You spent a lot of time golfing yes. this summer. Where'd you get to tell Tell me your, uh, your uh, summer of golf. Well, I have a wonderful girlfriend now and, and we've been dating <laughs> for about nine months and she, she's awesome. So we spent the first, you know, three months in quarantine and then, um, she lives in San Diego, California, works for CBS and, and does uh, golf tournaments, you know, pretty much every weekend. Actually, last yeah. weekend was her first weekend off. And uh, so we, uh, we went out to San Diego and so she could go back home and we ended up playing Torrey Pines. So that was really cool. Really? And, uh, you know, we, we bounced around from, from 
course to course. I play a little bit more than, than she likes to. She's really good. And, uh, and so she beats me, you know, sometimes. But I, I, as a competitor, I don't want to admit that. But uh, she's, a, she's a really good player. So uh, that's kind of, you know, our fun time to get on the course. And I'm actually, AJ, addicted to golf. Um, yes, I am. As a competitor and as a washed up quarterback, like I said, sure. my only chances to compete is when that ball is sitting on the tee. And I have to try to perfect my swing so I can hit it. But I really enjoy just getting out there and playing. I played, you know, when I was really little. Uh, I competed until I was about 11, uh, just in some local tournaments. And then I got, you know, the football, baseball, and basketball buzz. And, and uh, that kind of took over my summers. But, uh, you know, I'm a golf, a golf fanatic. And, um, and so I got, I got around, you know, to play a lot more this year than I ever have my entire career. And, yeah. and I got pretty good. I go, I go across the street and play the Blue Monster sometimes, you know, where I live. And, and so just getting out there and, and being an athlete and being a competitor is what I love. And Drew loves it too. So we get a chance to go out there and play. And obviously I've had a lot of chance to play with coach and that's always special, you know, yeah. you're playing with, you know, the, your, your boss and also, uh, you know, a father <laughs> figure that, that you've known for 15 years now. Yeah. Don't, don't beat him by too many. Drew, strokes, by the way, right? don't, yeah. let him, don't let him fool you. <laughs> Drew is an <laughs> unbelievable golfer. Yeah. And his dad is even better. Okay. No, so he, those he's golfed at some of the best courses there are. Oh even he'll, he'll go to Europe and, and just round after mm -hmm. round. He's extended vacations oh, yeah. uh, over in Europe to, to get more <laughs> rounds of golfing. But like, yeah, and he, I know, and he just got a new I just got a new driver, so now he's going to kick everybody's butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah adds a, adds makes it a little bit more difficult to uh, to gain some stroke. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's part of your brand, man. Like you, you know, like it's it, the Brain yeah. Rainer brand is all caps on Twitter and getting out on yeah. the golf course. And, and you you kind of mm -hmm. referenced it. Um, it, wh wh why didn't you play in high school? I mean, you, you play seriously kind of now. I mean, it's, it's a big yeah, part. Was absolutely. that tough not to kind of pursue it into high school? Because, you know, theoretically, mm -hmm. I think the easy line of thinking is, would you rather get beat up playing football or just have a nice day on the golf course and make a lot of money? Like, did you think yeah. about playing Me, golf? So I'll, I'll get a great story. This is when I quit. Uh, I quit competitively. <laughs> so I was, um, yeah. I was 11 years old. I was playing the Bobby Bowers um, tournament at Springfield Golf and Country Club where I grew up in, in D.C., uh, right, you know, Virginia, right outside D.C., and uh, my grandfather, who was a colonel in the Marines, and my dad, who was, you know, nothing short of that NFL player slash colonel in the Marines, cut from the same cloth, are walking with me. And I was playing pretty well. And, and uh, we get to my favorite hole in hole nine. And 11 years old, you have, have a favorite hole. Yeah. And I got, a, I got a snowman. I got an eight. So I oh, immediately no. I immediately turn. I go to hole 10, and I'm standing there, and I'm carrying my own bag. It's about – it's 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 – crazy hot in the summer in Virginia. Humidity is out of control. And uh, after my eight, I was just in the tank. I wanted to quit. And obviously, I couldn't quit. But I ended up, you know, carding something absolutely terrible. And I was like, all I want to do is go to the pool and play with my friends. So I was playing football, baseball, and basketball at the time. And I'll never forget, my dad was like, well, you know what, we're putting the clubs and you're going to focus on football, baseball, and basketball. And so I still played recreationally. But yeah. I, just, I was kind of just out of it. I'm more of a team sport guy, you know, when, when, it, comes, sure. when it comes to it. I love you know, kind of get out there and, and running and hitting people and, and just, you know, all my buddies, my buddies didn't play golf. And I think it's kind of just the environment that I was in. You know, my buddies were at the pool, kind of hanging out, playing pool basketball and playing football, baseball, and basketball. So it kind of was my, it was not in my culture. But if I can go back in time, AJ, yes, yeah. I would play golf. Well, I wouldn't be any good. <laughs> and think, you know, you got to be really elite to do that. But I would try for sure. The, the benefit now, as opposed to when you were 11, the benefit now of of responding to a snowman on nine uh you, you, you can go to the clubhouse and get yourself a cold one and still be in a good mood on 10 so. that's correct that's correct i am i am the epitome of a recreational golfer yeah I hit, it, I hit it pretty far if i can find it great if i can't i'm gonna pop another cold one yeah just try to have a good iron game and see if you can knock down some putts and 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 enjoy it. the company that's that's funny uh, you mentioned yeah. you mentioned your grandfather and then you mentioned bill your dad uh who, who mm. was a coach for 33 years had some mm. time with the green bay packers as well mm. uh in 86 and 87 uh he's an alum mm. of virginia tech so the other day mm. uh, i had lunch uh with bill roth who was the voice of virginia okay. tech for about 30 Absolutely. something years and, and i mentioned yes. that i was going to talk to you soon and he was talking uh, about bill a little bit and and say hey they, they really wanted Bryn out of high school. You know, yeah. Virginia Tech was, mm -hmm. was certainly a spot. I think you were the third-ranked quarterback in your high school mm -hmm. class. Uh, mm -hmm. I just love asking this question with, with 
you know, former athletes. Cause you know, I remember my experience, look, I, I didn't have a lot of schools coming after me to walk onto their cross country team, but I had three. It was the hardest decision ever. Like I changed my mind five times on the final day. Yeah. What was your recruiting process mm-hmm. like? Did you feel a draw to go to Pops' alma mater? And then what eventually led mm-hmm. you from where you were in Virginia to, to Chapel Hill? Yeah, I, I think I had the weirdest recruiting process of all time because, you know, one, I wanted to play football and baseball. And, um, and the, the, the caveat to this is my grandma, uh, who still lives in Blacksburg, Virginia, my mom went to Virginia Tech. Mm-hmm. All of my cousins went to Virginia Tech. They live 15 miles in, in Pulaski County, which is, you know, the Dublin area, you know, from Virginia Tech. I grew up going to Virginia Tech games. And um, and so, you know, the recruiting process started and they were actually my first offer. And, you know, my dad's alma mater. So I was, you know, kind of torn with that decision. Uh, but then my sister ended up going to Florida State and she was the first one. She's four years older and she was a Rockette and she's a she's an absolute stud, better, best athlete in the family. <laughs> but uh she actually ended up going to Florida State. And this was, you know, four years before I needed to make my decision. And I was like, huh. So she did it and didn't get yelled at. So if I told if I told Mushy, which is my grandma, that I'm going to North Carolina, how would she kind of respond, especially with my mom and dad? Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were very receptive. So, you know, crazy turn of events. You know, Frank Beamer was there, Bud Foster. And I ended up, you know, Coach Davis came into the house and it was kind of a no-brainer for my mom, you know, and, and – they're big time Hokies. Obviously my family is, is Hokie ties and still has season tickets. You know, my grandma still goes to the games. And, uh, and so I, I always have a little bit of the, the Hokie Hokie high in me. But <laughs> when my grandma showed up to the Virginia Tech game, we were playing them at home yeah. and uh, in Blacksburg and she was wearing Carolina blue. That's when I knew I made the right decision. So yeah, uh, I, I, had kind her of, I kind of, I kind of flipped the family to being Tar Heel fans now. Cause my, now my parents live in Chapel Hill. And so, you know, and my sister lives in Chapel Hill and runs a, you know, a great dance studio there. And she's actually the dance team, the coach of North Carolina's dance team. So oh, wow. it's yeah. all come full circle. You know, AJ, we were Hokey fans and then everybody just kind of, you know, our, our Carolina Tar Heel fans. So, yeah, it's no, been, it's, it was a wild process. Wild glad, process. She, glad she didn't guilt trip you there. That, that could have led to some tension. But she, once, you, oh, once you have Granny's approval. Was, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, once you're 16, 17 years old, you know, you go to grandma's house, you can tell her, hey, I'm getting recruited by, you know, North Carolina. I think I like it a little bit more. You you ease into those questions and kind of gauge the, you know, the, the temperature of the room, you know, so to speak. So Yeah. Um, in, in terms of your journey when you when you were there, obviously, I think you backed up TJ when, when you started, but that, but that was yeah. that was great for your experience. And then really assumed mm-hmm. a leadership role as a, as a redshirt sophomore. You had those 3,000 yard mm-hmm. seasons, but uh, I know that I know the the journey there didn't end the way you wanted to. Obviously, it was really mm-hmm. emotional after that sold that shoulder injury. I think that was in mm-hmm. November uh, of yep. your senior of your senior season. Mm-hmm. When you reflect on how that all ended, because you were being looked mm-hmm. at as a mid to early round draft pick, and obviously, mm-hmm. anytime an injury happens, that that comes into the equation. But when you look at mm-hmm. how you pr- proceeded, how you moved on, how you approached your career. Uh, after that injury, you know, what comes to mind? Um, what are your impressions of, of, of how you managed the, the end of your mm-hmm. Carolina career and going in, into starting as a professional? And I'll expand on, more on that and the, the journey that that encompassed, but just mm-hmm. from the start. Yeah, you know, I think it's a great testimony. Obviously, when you're going through it, you know, some tough times in, in my career and, and just the coaching changes. You know, I had three head coaches over yeah. – you know, my period of five years, I had four strength coaches in my period of five years and, you know, dealing with injuries, you know, I had three surgeries while I was at Carolina, um, dealt with not starting, dealt with, you know, being a highly recruited kid trying to play football and baseball um, and doing that and accomplishing that and had some really, really high moments of my career, but also some really low ones where I had to dig deep and find myself. And I really, you know, I say, this is my testimony. I tell our kids all the time, you know, I almost got my PhD and my master's degree in how to be an athlete and how to be, you know, a leader and how to control your emotions and, and deal with adversity in the game of football. Yeah. And I think I've gone through injuries. I've had surgeries. I've missed time. I've missed practices. I've had different coaches. I can really kind of relate to a college student athlete, a football player on every single diverse level that he will go through in his career. And so what I, you know, my the, my old self when I graduated at 23 and, and, and was with the Denver Broncos would have been like, oh, well, this stinks. You know, I'm going to get cut five times in the NFL. Yeah. And I've had everything happen to me 
you know, kind of in my career and the 30 year old self that I just turned 30 in January and I can sit and sit in people's homes and, and families' homes and say, Hey, I got recruited once. Hey, I had an injury once. I can call yeah. families now and, and, and moms and dads and say, Hey, look, uh, you know, yeah, there's, you know, your son tore his labrum, but we're going to get through it. And I know exactly what rehab to do. Um, you know, your, your son fractured his ankle. He, he's going to have bone spurs and, have, and be out in this time and have to rehab. And I can lean on those personal experiences because some people that I had as coaches, you know, no offense to them, they just didn't relate on any level of having a three technique, you know, in your face when you're trying to throw a touchdown against Miami. And I can speak from experience of, of all the, the, the things that I went through and how I dealt with it. And I needed a lot of support in those moments for my parents and, and, you know, everything, that, everybody that was around me. So I had a great support system going through those. But when I look back at it now, I wouldn't have had it any other way because I wouldn't have had the experience and, and the testimony that I have now of, of how, to, how to handle it and kind of how to process it at a young age. I think if people look at your career trajectory and your moves on the surface, they may not see all the little things that, that went into where you are now. They may say, hey, you know, graduated mm -hmm. Carolina, bounced around a couple of teams, got some good experience, and then easily slid into coaching. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, there's a, lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of aspects of your story. Like, I, I didn't even realize this. I mean, you yeah. worked for about a year, a little less maybe, at the mm -hmm. Tradition Golf Club. Um, yep. You know, and so I want to get into this because mm -hmm. at, at this point in your time, kind of resonated mm -hmm. with me, this part of your story. Look, once, once things start mm -hmm. rolling in college, right, like you're on top of the world. Like yep. <laughs> you, you, mm -hmm. the self-confidence, you know yeah. the, the achievements, you know, for you being all mm -hmm. ACC, like, like I went from covering – you know, broadcast in, in Omaha, the College World Series in Madison mm -hmm. Square Garden. And then a, a couple of months later, mm -hmm. I'm doing city council meetings, fish festivals, pick recreational <laughs> pickleball leagues in like small town yeah. North Carolina. And looking back, mm -hmm. it's a rite of passage. It's a way to get better. It's a way to get to the next step, but it's very humbling. And for you, mm -hmm. you, have, you, said, you said, quote, look, on Saturdays when you're used to suiting up, playing for Carolina – and then you're going to do the golf carts and got your headphones in and, and your sunglasses on and a hat. So you're a little more incognito, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's a, hum it's a very humbling experience, mm -hmm. but you learned a ton from it. you never lost faith. You were working out with your dad before you went in at 6am mm -hmm. to, to stay sharp. Mm -hmm. What, what was that period in time? Like when, when you're just dying to get an opportunity with the team and you're in the same place you were in college, but it's a very different experience mm -hmm. than maybe mm -hmm. a year ago. Yeah, and I think, AJ, that's why we get along, because we have similar stories, and I always relate to people in different ways, and I love people's stories and the history of how they got there and where they want to go after that. So, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of start, and, and, you know, obviously I was undrafted and went to, went to uh, you know, the Denver Broncos, and then when I came back, I got released, and this was kind of after the preseason, after week one, week two, and I was like, you know, Dang, I, all, all of my dream was just to be an NFL quarterback. And then, you know, obviously coming back home and having to watch, you know, your alma mater play and you're, and you're still in the same place and kind of trying to figure out your life yeah. of what it's going to be. And, and you just don't know if you're going to get a call. So I knew I always loved golf like we talked about. And, um, you know, Chapel Ridge was, was right up the street from my parents. And I've always been a hard worker. And I kind of, you know, my dad and I sat down and, you know, it was, it was a rough time. And you look back, but you, you got really – I got really tough in that moment. I mean, we were, we were training, you know, two times a day. And, and I would yeah. pull the carts around and, and wash the carts. And I, like I said, I was, my best friend Shane Malarkey, who I went to school with, was doing it with me because we were both kind of in the same rut. And we were like, okay, I, I know something good is going to come of this, out of this. But when you're in the moment, you know how it is. You're like, this is just not where I want to be. You're almost looking around like, what's going on? What am I doing and here? So, like, yeah. Exactly. And I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell a story, you know, we're, we're cleaning the golf carts and I brought dumbbells from my parents' house and jump rope. And I would, every, gar, every cart that I did, I would do, you know, curls or I would do push-ups. And then I would jump rope. And then I, I, go, I go park it, jog back and do it again just because there's so much built up anxiety that you have of not knowing what your future is. But you always have to stay prepared. And, um, and so I did that for, you know, the entirety of the season. So... I was just, you know, cleaning carts. You know, I, I tell the story. The frat kids would leave the carts out, and they would, they would come and, like, play golf until it got dark, and I just want to go home. I would almost be borderline, like, trying to punch something because I was like, I just want to go home. I'm working yeah. five days a week making, you know, whatever it is an hour. I didn't really care how much money. It was just, it was just, just because I just wanted to get out of the house and, and, you know, 
just just get away a little bit. And that's really where I found myself, AJ. I really found myself that I had a passion for football because I missed it. And then ended up, you know, in January, the Baltimore Ravens called me in for a tryout. And, and during that time, I went, I was still trying out for teams. I went to the Jets, the Bengals. Uh, yeah. I went to Baltimore twice. I went to, you know, so I was, I was in between of, of, of basically a job hunt, trying to find out where the next spot was. Ended up signing a futures contract with, uh, you know, in 2015, in January, the Baltimore Ravens. But, you know, when I was in Baltimore, I found a new appreciation for, like you said, when you're on top of the world and, and, and you're the Carolina quarterback and then you, you tear your labrum and fracture your scapula in November and everything just kind of goes different, um, yeah. you really find yourself and you find, and you find out who you are. And I, I look back now and I'm like, wow, you know, that, that's amazing. That, that was, you know, almost, you know, that was only five years ago. And I was yeah. cleaning golf carts. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. So. And there's such a there's such a line. There's such a balance between you know the internal belief of getting the opportunity mm-hmm. that you feel you, you are ready for, and also mm-hmm. look once you graduate college, people are knocking at your door saying, "What are you going to do? What's your plan? Exactly. <laughs> you know, is you yeah. going to do this forever?" Mm-hmm. You're thinking, "No, obviously not." But you don't right. know how long to do mm-hmm. that, and when that mm-hmm. might lead to the next step. And you know that leads to opportunities like you had in Baltimore, look, macro level, big scale uh, for most people, uh, a preseason win against the Saints is not a big deal. But Mm -hmm. for your story, it Mm -hmm. it, it was almost a culminate. Like that that was a huge moment and Mm -hmm. so much further along from where you were a couple of months ago. Like I I watched the YouTube video of that. I mean, Mm -hmm. that stadium was electric. (laughs) I mean, the lower bowl was pretty full. You you had just Mm -hmm. thrown a pick. Fourth and goal, yeah. nine seconds left. You're at like the two yard line, and it's a bootleg, and you get in for the score. And again, macro, you know, mm. preseason games, most people are like whatever, but but really, mm. and that's a huge moment. That's validation. That's mm. something you you will always have, and that had to have mm. been one of the most special football moments. You probably hold that in high regard with a lot of Carolina memories. Yeah, and it was just I I get goosebumps thinking about it now, and and just how much fun it was, right? And and I think for me to to you know, it, it's a great story, and I, I can lean on that. And I'll tell my kids that one day of, of just the hard work and perseverance, but it's it's what football brings to you. So, you know, it was my first preseason game, and I threw a pick on the previous drive. And I think it was my only second professional drive of my career. Like, <laughs> I, I mean, I didn't I didn't really, like, I didn't have any games in Denver. They, You know, I practiced, but it wasn't really, you know, I wasn't getting any reps, and I didn't play. So it was my yeah. first game ever playing of, of NFL level, and I was just so nervous and jittery, and then, I know we converted a fourth and 20 to Max Williams on a flat route versus all zero, all zero blitz versus Rob Ryan. And I grew up being a football guy and Rob Ryan's like one of the, you know, legends of his yeah. defense. And we were playing New Orleans and I'll never forget fourth and 20. I'm just like, the odds of us getting a fourth and 20 are pretty slim. And so don't, let alone throw a flat route versus cover zero and they don't pick up the tight end. And so, yeah. you know, he gets a fourth and 20. And I remember getting in the huddle and a couple of my buddies, you know, I played with James Hurst, who was my left tackle. In, in college, and we started together for 40 games, and, and we, like, looked at each other, like, this is your time, man. Let's go make a play. And so I'm getting goosebumps because you that's what sports is about. And then I can't run worth crap, AJ, and it probably took 20 seconds to get in that end zone, but that was the most excited. That was every golf ball I picked up, every golf cart I washed, you know, all my mom and dad, you know, all their support throughout the years, and I can't – you know, those memories you just – you have for a lifetime, but that's what sports, you know – I want to say it, it it rewards your hard work. And, and that's what I felt like. I remember just being in like, I mean, being in a locker room and, and, you know, there's cameras and stuff like that. And Joe Flacco coming up to me and just Suggs pouring water on me and Gatorade shower. And, you know, you make that mark and you make that leadership. And I went on to have a great preseason and, and ended up being with them for a little bit, you know, throughout yeah. the course of 2015. It was, it was a great moment, a great moment. Yeah, that's that makes it all mm-hmm. worth it. You know, one mm-hmm. one program, forget what it was, they used the hashtag pursue moments. You know, those things, the, the, yes. the bootleg in a preseason, you know, that's a moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and one mm-hmm. you, you can always maybe look back more fondly on as the years go on. I think in the heat of the moment, you're fighting for a job and you're thinking about, you know, the process, what's next, but mm-hmm. a little bit of reflection. Man, that, that's an awesome Absolutely. memory to, to have. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. So but before um, his spontaneous retirement, uh, I remember viral <laughs> clips, uh, I think, of Andrew Luck. Uh, he'd get blasted. Yes. He would get rocked. Uh, and then, and then yes. he would congratulate the player who, who just whacked mm-hmm. him. Hey, good hit, man. Yes. Great hit. Way to go. Great job. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
I feel like that was not you at Carolina. I, <laughs> I, I, I feel you're a little more competitive. I feel you mm. may have jawed with people, DBs, D linemen. Mm. I feel you may have gotten mm. after it. Uh, am mm. I accurate in that assessment, or were you more in the Andrew Luck mold? Um, um, or did you yap a little bit? I think you got to ask my players that I, if, I, if, I, <laughs> if I've ever stopped. Right. So <laughs> you come out to practice. I, I'm just nonstop. I'm competitive. I want to win. That's how I, I was raised. That's how I was born. And when I was at Carolina and even in high school, I mean, you, you, there's probably stories of me just getting in. Not not it, I always call. I tell my girlfriend competitive conversations. Right. So <laughs> I'm not really attacking you. I just want to win. And at all costs, of, I'm going to I'm going to find out what makes you tick and what makes you not tick. And what if I can get under your skin and make you not tick? then I get that advantage. And, you know, I, 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 I say it's, it's really competitive, but it's also just for love of the game. I think that's part of sports of why you play is you want to go win. And I really don't know what a loss is because I want to get better and try to improve. And I think I have to move on quickly from losses that I've had in my career and even now quickly because I, I, I let them linger and I let them motivate me. So, yes, to answer your question, I probably think I'm the best crap talker on the East Coast. And – I think that's just something I love is the competitive okay. fire that I have in me. All right. It, the, th the thing about that is you, you remember the, those moments when you get into it. Like, mm -hmm. I still remember a track meet sophomore year of high school when a kid we raced against got ejected because we had little forearms going on the last lap. Like, you remember. Do you remember, yeah. do you remember like, when did you really get into it? Was it on the road in Columbia, the top 10 South Carolina team? Did you go back and Ooh, forth to Duke? Good. Like when you look back and think, mm -hmm. man, I'm I might have been an asshole that game. <laughs> like which which games so, come to mind? I'd probably say Virginia Tech my first year starting in 2011. We played them on a Thursday night up there, late October, maybe early November. It was really, really cold. And I dreamed of playing in Lane Stadium when they play Inner Sandman. And I remember going to the 50. And Bud Foster is a really good family friend of ours. But he's very competitive as well. One of the best defensive coordinators of all time. Oh, yeah. And uh, I remember going to the 50, and we literally had to be separated by Ron Cherry, the ACC official. And You and Bud. I, I were, me and Bud Foster. And, and it was like, hey, I'm going to throw for 300. This is what I'm going to do. You should, you should blitz more on third down. I've watched a ton of film. And I'm like, this is, this is getting – and I'm not really disrespectful. I'm just telling you what I saw on film that, that you're not going to beat me. And, uh, you know, they ended up beating us by seven, but we came back. It was a great game. It was one of my favorite games of all time. We actually missed three field goals, if anybody's asking, or we would have won the game. That's neither here nor there. But that was one of my favorite adult-to-player conversations because I studied the game so much, and I was looking forward to it. And I just went up to him, and we just – you know, he was – he knew me since I was 15, so I felt like yeah, I was there's a little background. doing it. But, okay. Um, and then I played against Jack Tyler, his middle linebacker, uh, at Virginia Tech again, high school, and he actually ended my career in high school. And I stopped. It's, it's almost Friday Night Lights esque. We're in the state semifinals, and um, I reached out to get a first down in the pouring rain. We're the only school in Fairfax County public schools to play because we were scoring 50 a game, and they wanted to play us in, in, in the rain and mud. And so I was this this short, and he tackled me. And it was a uh, you know kind of one of the Friday Night Lights. Hey, extend yeah. the first down marker, and you don't get it. Your career's over. So we always had some good battles. Um, Duke battles were great. NC State was, you know, crazy, crazy, you know, crap talking battles and, and those things like that. But yeah, I would love to get a poll on FIU uh, Twitter and see if I was a trash talker from some of my friends and family and, and people that yeah, know me. Yeah, we well. can definitely do that. That's amazing. You, 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 trash talking Bud Foster. <laughs> Like a oh, legend. Yeah. It was it was good. It was good. I know. I, at that's the audacious, time, you're, man. You're, like I, I know you were rolling. You have a then, lot but of, that's yeah. that's Bud. You got a lot of hormones at 21. I know that's that's Bud. I looked up to and went in the locker room with when I was a little shaver. So and he's, yeah, he, but it was good. Yeah, and that staff was recruiting you. And and, and they, I know <laughs> a, lot, a lot of a lot of backstories there too. A lot of backstories. Yeah, so no, was good. Was that's good. that's fantastic. Uh, that competitive streak continues uh, at FIU. Uh, most notably, a year or two ago, when when Dorsey was with the program, uh, Ken Dorsey is mm -hmm. now up oh, in um, Buffalo, I believe. You two had a game. Uh, I think you'd go to the forty or the fifty, launch a mm -hmm. football, and try to hit the field goal post. Um, mm -hmm. Who won more of those? Okay, so be best competitor I've ever met is Ken Dorsey, by far, the best. I mean, and you two gravitated to each other pretty quickly. That I mean, that was a 
a, 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 a brotherhood, a, a bromance, I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we still are. We, we just yeah. talked yesterday. So we'll, we'll call each other on the road on the way home and talk about, you know, life and, and just everything, play golf together all the time. And so we played the goalpost challenge game, right? And, um, and so, you know, we're, I swear, AJ, we must have played over 200 games during this season. It would be every Sunday, every Thursday, every – and it became every day. It's like, hey, let's go, man. We played in the dark, AJ, without the lights on. So we're, we're waiting to hear the ding go off the middle of the goalpost. And you get yeah. one point if it hits the top. And then if it hits the back bar, you get two. And so this is how competitive we are. I have a golden toilet seat that sits in my office. And he has a cowboy Monday morning, uh, like, lazy boy chair we got on Amazon because the winner – had to put the poet seat to know every single day that they showed up to their office, they lost. And then the winner got the Monday morning quarterback. And so this is like, hey, I'm going to put this on your desk with a yeah. piece of duct tape. You stink. Or something <laughs> like that. Maybe a little bit vulgar than that. I don't know. And that's, that's what kept us going. And obviously the guy is one of the best. He's a Hall of Fame quarterback in college football and a Hall of Famer at Miami. And they should have put him in the ring a long time ago. But – he was 31. He lost one game in his college career. And I wanted to I wanted to be him. I wanted yeah. to be Ken Dorsey. And now that we have this competitive fire, it still has coaches in our profession. It's so much fun. And I think that's what you live for. I, I think that's one of the cool things about the staff that, that Butch has assembled and even guys who have come mm-hmm. and gone throughout the staff the last three or four years. Just a lot of, obviously, elites – collegiate talent from guys he coached, but so many went on to the NFL as well uh, and did and did great things, whether it was Damian Lewis or Kinnear Kennard, uh, guys have been to the NFL level. And then obviously Dorsey, as he said, lost one game in his, in his collegiate mm-hmm. career. I know you're coaching corners, but as, as a lifelong quarterback, when you had Dorsey here for mm-hmm. the year that he went, and what'd you try to pick his brain about? What, what would you try to learn? I, I mean, being a quarterback, that never mm-hmm. goes away. Like, I have a feeling, like I know right. you're coaching DBs, but you probably stick your head in the mm-hmm. quarterback room every now and then when you're walking down the hallway. That never goes away. What did you, mm-hmm. you try to learn from, from Ken when he was here? You know, I picked I, – I, I, know, I knew him because this is how crazy the story goes. When yeah. he was done playing, similar to me, he was a quality control coach for my first year in 2011 at North Carolina. So that's when we first met. So yeah. this goes full circle about what Coach Davis has done for people in his, in his program. And this is a great recruiting tool that I tell our players all the time. This is a lifelong thing that you have with people uh, as far as the coaching profession. You never know when you want to get back in. So I, it's my first year starting at Carolina, and he's quality control, control coach doing the same thing, competing, throwing a Gilman Nets, you know, watching the film till 10 o'clock at night when he didn't have to. And he yeah. just got done playing for the 49ers and the Browns and, and his – his legacy career in college. So I was, I've been, you know, a huge Ken Dorsey fan since I was little. And even, you know, at the college level, I was like, this is Ken Dorsey. His knowledge is, is off the charts. I mean, he's one of the smartest human beings offensively I've ever been around. Yeah. And we would sit there and just talk, not necessarily offensive football, but just entire team dynamic, how to build a culture of a team and, and how to, you know, how to have the quarterback be the leader and what leadership tactics he's, he's been around and, how has he picked the brain of Sean McDermott, who he's with now in Buffalo, or, you know, different coaches that he's been around. Um, and it was just so much fun because you're sitting down with a like-minded person. You can just talk for hours about your profession. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I will say one thing that I, I really gained from him is how he studies. Um, mm-hmm. The guy is relentless. i never forget. We were watching, you know, Stone Norton was a quarterback that we have now. Uh, we recruited out of Nashville, Tennessee. And we, he was like, we got to watch Stone play. And I'm like, yeah, we got to watch Stone play. So we live streamed and Jimmy rigged an HDMI to the Shula's hotel thing. And we're watching game prep for the next week. And, and also doing kind of just some side, some side game prep for the next team, next opponent. And we're watching Stone Norton play against, uh, you know, Brentwood Academy or something like that. And I'll never forget. You just pinch yourself. It's like 10 o'clock at night. And you, you just don't even want to go to bed. It's like you're watching yeah. a good movie. You don't want to turn it off. And so, I mean, I'll never forget that of, of those moments of, of just him taking me under the wing and, and playing goalpost challenge and still talking yeah. to this day and, you know, just having that relationship and that friendship. All right, we'll be right back with Bryn. Just a reminder that this podcast is brought to you by Cafe Bustelo, friends of the pod. Whether you like your coffee con leche, iced, black or sweet, with Cafe Bustelo blends instant coffee and K-cup pods. There's no wrong way to enjoy a cafecito. Cafe Bustelo. Official sponsors of the FIU Athletics Podcast. 
All right, let's get back to it, Brent. Yeah, it was awesome to have him here for that year. It was sad to see him go, but obviously doing good things uh, up in Buffalo. Uh, Brent, I want to I want to take some time here. Uh, let's let's talk about Aub, uh, Aubrey for a little bit um, and, yeah. and what he meant. Um, I think that'd be good to, good to talk about Aub. Uh, man, that news felt so sudden. Um, mm -hmm. I, I knew he was sick. I didn't know how far along he was. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know he meant an incredible deal to you. Uh, you mm -hmm. tweeted, you know he taught you how to be a coach. Uh, when, mm. when you're reflecting on your relationship with him and, and his relationship with this program, just, just what, came, what came to mind? What, what do you think about uh, with a guy and a person like Aubrey? Yeah, um, you know, Aubrey, he's just, uh, you know, he's just awesome. And you, and you miss the moments, right, AJ? And, yeah. um, you know, dealing with loss, you always just you remember and cherish the times that you had with him and, and Shanae and, and AJ, and they're in such great hands because they're going to have more coaches than they could ever ask for. Yeah. Uh, because that's who Aubrey was to us. I'm 27 years old and I get to FIU and I get to be around Aubrey Hill, who's won state titles and I've only heard great things. And he recruited me when he was at Duke and Pitt and would come in, he recruited my dad's high school. So I've known him since I was little. It was yeah. just Coach Hill. And he had this electrifying smile and, his way to relate to the players is what I really gravitated towards because he pulled me in. Hey, hey, boss, come come holler at me. And it would be an hour, two hours about Steve Spurrier stories or playing with Emmett Smith or his career, which he had a great career at Florida, or his Carroll City teams. And I'll never forget this is my favorite story of, of all time. I, I get on the road for, for the first time, and we, we go recruiting together, and I pull up to Carroll City. And AJ, I swear, I have this memory of, of Aubrey Hill getting out of his of his of his Cadillac, and he had his black Cadillac, yeah. and we're standing there, and their practice is about to start. To, about to start. Every single person came up and dapped up Aubrey Hill. <laughs> What's up, boss? And yeah. he was the president of Carroll City. I've never seen anything like it, <laughs> and I was just like. That's real deal Aubrey Hill right there because we called him real deal. Real yeah. deal Aubrey Hill. And got out. We stayed there for about three hours, watched practice, and just cut it up. And I've never been so, you know, had a friend like that where he was just so accepting. Hey, this is your first, this is my first time on the road recruiting ever in college football. Yeah. And I'm with the legend of Carroll City, and they're like, Bryn, you're with Aubrey? Anything you need. Hey, whatever you need. Hey. It, it come back anytime. Hey, let's talk defense. Hey, let's talk offense. Let's just talk. Let's talk football. And I would never be in that position if it wasn't for Aubrey. And I'll never forget, we were also going to Georgia, and we, we, were, we were recruiting, and we were recruiting together. And we were on different sides, and we were just going to get some dinner and late night and just having yeah. those memories of, of his, his, his soul and, and who he was as a human being. Um, you know, Sinead and, and AJ are just so tough. And, and you know, obviously I was – Allowed to go to the funeral service, and that was really tough. But the impact that Aubrey made on my life, I, I can't thank him enough. I just remember thinking, you know, every time I, I would watch the receiver position group um, getting drills in or, or whatnot, I, I, more than many times my thought was, man, these guys are lucky to, to have him as their coach. Like, these guys yes. are getting to learn from one heck of a coach who you know, obviously played in the mm -hmm. fun and gun offense and so well respected, mm -hmm. not just in the South Florida high school community, but I mean, it feels like everyone in college football knew the man, you know? Um, yes, I, I yes. think what, that one memory that comes to mind, you know, you mentioned how he's so accepting, like you're going to high school for the first time. You know, if you're with Aub, like you're, you're good, you know? Mm -hmm. one, one memory, it was yes. the Gasparilla Bowl, man, uh, about an hour before <laughs> the game. And Aub, uh, Hurley, Tim, Swayze, Kenny Kennard, uh, you know, they have, they have their, their Gables experience together, that shared experience. They mm -hmm. were taking a picture together an hour before the game, and I stood off to the side. Mm -hmm. And Hurley may have started the sentiment, but Aubrey quickly joined in. He said, you, you ran for him too. Get in this picture, man. You're part of it. You know, it, it, yeah. it was, I was only at FIU for three, four months at that time. Yeah. And he, he, made, he simultaneously made me feel a part of two families <laughs> in that moment. Yep. It was a small thing to him. But that meant a lot, and he he just had nice a way to, to relate to, to whoever he was with, whether it was other coaches, 18-year-olds uh, he was coaching, 
support staff. You know, whenever you talk to Aubrey Hill, you, you felt good about yourself and, and good Absolutely. about the future of, mm -hmm. of where you were at. Uh, so, that, so that was, yep. that was definitely, you know, tough news. And, you know, I, I think the team, I think the program's going to have him in mind this year, just like it had uh, mm -hmm. Emmanuel Lubin last year and, and continues to do, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I think yep. that'll. Absolutely. We're coaching, we're be, coaching for yeah. him this year. That's for sure. Yeah, a hundred percent, and uh, he, he certainly means a lot to to all of us here uh, at FIU. Um, as we move forward here a little bit, uh, we'll get to the mailbag in a couple minutes. We, ha we had a nice number of contributions. Uh, that will be awesome. That will be a lot of fun. Speed round coming up here soon too. But want to reference. I want to talk about this. Was fascinating to me. Uh, I think it was an ESPN story. Might have. I, I got to figure out the source. Uh, but they did a story basically on. James Morgan's recruitment, right? Uh, mm -hmm. How he sent a, a million emails out to collegiate programs, uh, hadn't had any responses. So you're looking for a quarterback before a recruiting meeting. James's email sat in your inbox for, th for 33 days. Yes. And you told the guy did the interview, he said, this looks kind of bad, but I, I, you know, you get a lot of emails. You get, you get a lot of coaches saying yeah. guys can play. Mm -hmm. It's 6.30 in the morning. You have a recruiting meeting mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. So this is the coaching edition of, like, I'm procrastinating my homework. Like, I got to turn in this paper. Yes. You got to bring some recruits to the table. So you type, yep. you type quarterback, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden you see his email that's been sitting there. You, you look at the tape, and you're like, maybe we have a quarterback. And, and mm -hmm. all he does is lead us to a, a couple of bowl games. So that's <laughs> the best search. Yeah. Tell me about that story, uh, locating James. Uh, it, just how – I mean, it's got to be, I don't think we realize, maybe that, that you said that might sound bad on the surface, but you get a million emails from recruits and coaches. So just the story of, yeah. of finding James and how that came to be. Oh, it was, it's, it's amazing. And like you said, so I, I'm literally sitting at my desk and, you know, Coach, Coach Davis, we, we were in the, in the market of getting a quarterback that had some experience. And, you know, I, I've searched the country. I'm like, okay, I can do this on my own. You know, I'm, hey, I'm you know, I'm going through, I mean, I must have watched 50 to 75 quarterbacks from, you know, Juco to – I even watched the kid in England. I was like, okay, you know, maybe we can go get some guy overseas. And I'm like, okay, this is just not working for me. And I remember just sitting there, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, what am I going to do? And it hits you right in the face. It's like, all right, let me just go back through my emails. And, I, I like I said, AJ, I'm the worst with emails and technology. I'm just – I'm not – I'm getting used to it as I'm, as I'm becoming a coach instead of a player, right? You know? Yeah. So I think that's the transition that naturally has to happen. So I literally typed in quarterback. And we have a meeting at, at, at 7. It's about 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm an early morning guy. And I found it. And I'm like, okay, I read the email. And here's the links. Here's the YouTube. Click the YouTube. Wow. I was blown away. So on yeah. field comebacks, checking the ball down, movement in the pocket. So then, you know, I, I really do all my research. So I go, to, I go to YouTube again, and I type in, you know, just, you know, just, just James Morgan. And the first day of spring, he was mic'd up. And thank God Bowling Green did that because I think that was my selling point. Yeah. The leadership, the, the, the way that the players responded to him, the positivity that he had when he was just bouncing around and, and flying around and trying to get everybody better and the encouragement. He freaking knew all the ball boys' names. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of me, to be quite honest with you, just the, the, the impact that he had on the whole building. And you can tell it. I watched three of his interviews post game. And I, because I think that you can gain, you know, a lot from a quarterback on how he responds, you know, good and bad. And then I watched three football games and I watched the Michigan State game twice. Mm -hmm. And this was over the course. I said, Coach, I got a guy, but I'm not, I want to finish the day and, and I want to, you know, potentially get him on the phone. And, you know, one thing about Coach Davis, get him, once you get him on the phone or you get, you get into a certain place where you think the kid's good enough and he believes in you, that's, that's what a good recruiter does. And Coach Davis is, kind of lineage of, of recruiting, um, you know, coaches. And so that's what I did. I watched Michigan State twice, and he – and I, AJ, I kid you not, they must have dropped seven balls that were right on the money. And they're playing on the road in, in East Lansing. And I'm like, that's a dang good player right here. And I kept watching games, and I kept – you kept all – you know, getting yeah, – I, I reached out to some other coaches that played against them. Hey, what do you think? Road, off the charts. So it was a no-brainer from that point. but. You know, the, the email was the selling point of, of how well written it was. And I, I yeah, you know, I showed it, but it was unbelievable. I just want a chance. I want something to prove. I don't care if I have to come in and compete 
and getting him on the phone, it was, it was amazing. I mean, it was, truly was. I want to ask you this because I, I would ask any recruiting coordinator this because it's interesting concept to me. We mentioned your inbox and how it clutters up really quickly. Brent, how, how many emails do you get from coaches that say this guy can play and you look at the film and they can't really play? <laughs> <laughs> how, yeah. how often is that the case? I mean, how, how much tape, like when you watch tape, is, is it an intensive process or is it like a demo reel within 30 seconds, you kind of know what, you, what you're working with? What, how often is it true to, true to the, the reviews you're getting from whether it be a player or a coach? I, I think I always say this, and I think this comes from my dad being a high school coach. Yeah. I respect so much what the high school coaches do and the work they put in throughout the course of their year. It is a yeah. really tough job to be a high school coach because you get a new team every single year. Yeah. And you're trying to give the kids a chance and an opportunity. So I look at this a little bit different. Okay. Um, I really do watch every kid. I try to at least. And I know there's only 24 hours in a day, but I try to take time and watch every kid. Now, here's what I'll say to this. Is, is the best program for him to come and play for is FIU? No. Maybe it's Towson. Maybe it's a different program. I want to help all these kids go and achieve their, their full potential, right? And so I really think that this, this is me as a person because of that's who my dad was at the high school level. Yeah. And, you know, my grandfather was a, was a superintendent of schools for 30 years and a high school football coach in his own right. And that's just kind of how I grew up. So I think I would be doing a disservice because if it was my son one day, I would want them to watch the film. And yeah. so – that's, that's kind of how I answer it. And now, can you get to every single kid? AJ, it's not possible. So to answer yeah. your question, you get – I mean, I, my inbox, I, can't, I don't even know what the number is right now. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's a process. and it's a, Recruiting takes a long time. And everybody wants it to be instantaneous. Everyone yeah. wants to say, oh, do you, do you think I can play? Well, I really don't know. I just watched a three-minute highlight. <laughs> I got to go and do my research. You know, because yeah. I, I would have never found James Morgan and thought, you know, all that stuff if I didn't do my research and what's your GPA and there's there's a long list of things that in boxes you have to check because some people you know are really talented and they're just not a good fit for for what we do and, and how we play football and that's okay but I want to get you to a spot where you can and you know what's interesting too you're not just I don't think you guys are just watching the highlight tape like Butch has referenced before he'll he'll want to watch wants to watch the full game and see Definitely. how that guy interacts with his teammates when he goes back to the bench. When oh, he goes yeah. back to the side. Absolutely. Line. You know, there's, there's a lot yep. of character things that go beyond, mm -hmm. you know, the, the huddle film uh, that, yep. that he wants to analyze. And, and if any recruits are listening, yeah. if any recruits are listening, we watch your worst game first and your best <laughs> game last. Yeah. And we'll see how you jog off the field when you're down 21. No. I got to see that. So, because it's going to be how you lead. It's going to be how, how you rush on field goal. You know, how, are you going to try to still block the kick? Because that kick you block could win you the game. So yeah. it's little things like that, that that, you know, high school kids really don't understand because they're just thinking, you know, I made a highlight tape. Okay, that's great. So let's watch you play a game. Yeah. Hey, one more thing before we get to the speed round here. Um, yeah. Did, did, Bill, did Bill ever push you to be a punter? <laughs> or was there oh no God. chance? Was there yeah. no chance of you punting? So I always punted. I punted in high school. I really always did. I just didn't have his leg. I swear. I mean, he <laughs> hits bombs. I mean, I'm telling yeah. you now, I, I hope he listens to this, but he hits absolute spirals, bombs, coffin corner. I mean, I remember when I was young, I would just try to catch him and be under and I'm like, dad, like I can't even catch that. It's a perfect spiral. It hits me in the chin. And I'm like, <laughs> I would try to, I would try to punt it back. And I, now do I know the skill set to do it? Yes. Yeah. Am I proficient enough? And did I get enough reps? And I, did I like it? No. I was always a quarterback. I was like always, you wanted you know, to be on the field a little bit, a little bit yeah. more. And, didn't and you punt one game enough. at Carolina freshman year? Didn't you have one punt? That was my first play. My first How was play that? Inside, it was like at the 11 yard line, maybe the 15. So okay. we ran. It was called Wolfpack punt for Coach Davis, and I was always like the the backup punter and the kind of the, the quarterback punting guy. And so my first play. No, I'm, I'm literally have a headset on. I'm worried about the drive. We, you know, I'm worried about talking to TJ. Yeah. And all of a sudden I hear Coach Davis go, and I'll, man, I have like nightmares about this. <laughs> Wolfpack punt, Wolfpack punt. And I'm like, Wolfpack punt, that's me. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I go grab my helmet. I'm dang near dropped the ball. It's my first snap in, in, in college football. So I've always dreamed about this moment of it being a quarterback moment. It's a punting moment. I ended up, I was like, just don't whiff. And I hit it down to the 15. It was inside the 20, I believe. But, no, I'll never forget that. That was, that was crazy. And then about my dad's story is that he never – he punted – he went to um, Virginia Tech to be a running back. 
So he kind of yeah. had to teach himself how to punt. And then, you know, obviously, I, I, I think he's one of the best in, in the country and trains NFL guys still to this day. And, you know, yeah, yeah. He's, 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 he mastered his craft, I can tell you that. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, they're, they're, I, I can see that discussion happening. Hey, you want to get into punching? No. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I really like quarterback. I really enjoy I want to play more than one. I want to play more than five snaps a game, Dad. That'd yeah. be great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. Uh, all right. Let's go yeah. to the speed round here. All right. Basically, short answers, sure. one or the other. Elaborate a little bit, but a uh, quick speed round here. We'll start with that. All right. Here we go. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. The, the Office, Parks and Rec, or different show? A different show. Which one? Uh, I'm a huge Entourage fan. And I just got into mm-hmm. Yellowstone. I, I've been binge watching Netflix with my girlfriend for a long time. So I have a lot of shows, but Entourage, best show of all time. Uh, what's your favorite comedy? What's the best comedy? Best comedy. I'm going oh, with how I gosh. met your mother here. Kind of took over my life in, in the fall oh, of 17. Um, my parents really like the big bang theory. I think it's pretty good. I've gotten into that lately, but um, is it recent? Are we talking recent? I say no, it doesn't have to be recent. It doesn't have to be okay, recent. Uh, dang comedies. Hey, friends. I like friends. My sister loved friends. Let's just go with friends. Okay, we'll go with Let's friends. Go with friends. Yeah. Um, <laughs> top of the hill or he's not here? Oh, oh. Sundays, <laughs> he's not here. Top of the hill, Saturday, Friday night and Saturday night. Sunday okay, got that confirmed. Great day, great day that's, an, that's an Easter egg for our Chapel Thrill friends. We'll just move on from there. Uh, quick pa- uh, power Thanks. rankings. South Beach, Brickle, Wynwood. Power rankings, one through three. Ooh, one through three. Um, South Beach <laughs> one. Oh, okay, okay, all right, Brent. Win, Winwood two, Brickle three. Okay, South Beach, Winwood, Brickle. Love them all, though. I didn't see it going in that order. I, 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 I'm just, <laughs> well done, well done. We'll, we'll have to, we'll have to expand right upon. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to elaborate on that after. Uh, best place yeah. to eat in Miami. Best place to eat Miami Joe's. Joe's best Crab. place, best place to eat in West Springfield, Virginia. <laughs> oh, that you might hurt some. So you might hurt tough. some feelings here. Oh my God! We're tagging. We're tagging whoever you you say okay, to. <laughs> uh, Mike Mike's All American Grill. Mike's All American Grill. Yes. The uh, get the hush puppies. Okay. By the way, yeah. uh, I looked up where you were from but i, I didn't look at yeah. the map where is west springfield are we near charlottesville is that near blacksburg no where, it's, where? it's up north so it's literally uh, um like george mason george yeah, mason university mason. is about 15 minutes from where i grew up okay gotcha all right yeah have an idea so mason now. dc right outside dc i can get to the white house in 15 minutes gotcha so okay. if you just think about Better. dc that's kind of where i was first the first suburb out, outside of dc waffle house or ihop I'm going with Waffle House because you love Waffle House, AJ. We would have we would have Come ended on. the podcast and canceled it if I know. it went the other way. That's right. So and we and we know Waffle House is my spot. There there wasn't any other answer to that question. I'm glad you answered it correctly. <laughs> that would have that would have put a damper on the good spirits we we had built up here. Uh, will you ever have a TikTok? No, absolutely <laughs> not. I hate, I hate social media. I despise it. <laughs> Well, you got it. You, you, you're can't, very okay. I, that'll bring up a follow up question in a second. Uh, okay, final mail, final speed round. Uh, your NBA finals matchup. NBA finals matchup. Dang it! I wish the Golden State Warriors were playing. Okay. Um, no, but no, this front, year, front I would. I want to. I want to see LeBron. Um, okay. And I'm a, I'm a. Celtics are still in it. I want to see the Celtics. Yeah, they had a good game the other I day. See they, the uh, they yeah, I want to in Toronto. I like. Uh, I like the coach for the Celtics, and I like LeBron. I, I think uh, that would be a good series. Huge okay. fan of the bubble. They're doing a they're doing a great job. Yeah, Celtics Lakers was always a lot of fun, and the bubble has certainly yeah. been successful. Uh, last note, uh, you mentioned social media. What started your branding of all caps on Twitter? Every like every original media. tweet from you is is all caps. Really, no matter what's what it's about, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I love it. I, it's phenomenal. So what what started? So I took us. I got a great education from the University of North Carolina. And uh, so I was in a marketing class and this is really kind of, I, I, I really, I don't know how this came about for me, but I was you know, director of recruiting, obviously the first year I got here and I was like, you got to make a brand, you know, you got to make somebody, you got to stand out in some way. And I, I think I do that by my personality, but how do you do it on social media without being a jerk? Right. Yeah. Nobody. So I kind of, you know, teeter on the edge of that a lot with my life. And um, 
And so I remember it was sports marketing class and, and um, Dr. Stroman, who came and spoke to us, was one of my professors. And I remember she said, you got to really be your own and, and, and be authentic of who you are. Well, I'm a pretty loud person. So I was like, let me just try all caps and see if it gets some steam because people have to read what you say in all caps. When you're scrolling, you got to see the all caps guy. Like, it's yeah. just like, whether you want to read it or not, wherever you are in your life, you're going to have to see the all caps guy or you're going to unfollow me. And so, and that's good either way, but I'm just trying to promote FIU and, and the brand that I got. And, okay. And so it really I, kind yeah. of started because of that. It's a, it's a good brand. I, I like <laughs> what you built up with that for, for hating social media. Um, no, you're, you're doing well on the Twitter, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't it's see you on TikTok. I looked you up before I asked that question. Didn't see it. I didn't know if you had private yeah. account. No TikTok. Can't, I'm, can't uh, expect I, to see I, one, I got one post on Instagram and that's all it's probably going to be. <laughs> all right, let's go to the mailbag. Had some nice contributions from a variety of friends of the program. Uh, we're going to start a um, big fan of the pod, a uh, big friend of the program. Uh, Amanda Balionis uh, chimes oh, in. Gosh. Uh, she says, Bryn, if he had to give up his camo Crocs or dude wipes oh. forever, <laughs> which would he choose to forego? This is very important. We need to know. Oh my gosh. This is, this is a tough decision. Wow. Amanda, I'm going to, wow. Okay. Well, she put it out there. Um, I have to give up one. Okay. Yes. I'm going to have to part with the camo cross because I need the dude wipes. The dude wipes are a need, right? And, and I recommend oh every guy out there subscribe to do what dude wipes, Amazon subscription, get them every month. They're, they're huge. They're, they're, they're monumental in, in your everyday well-being. I really appreciate how Crocs have come back, though, and camo right. certainly is very respectable. Um, Thanks, that's Amanda. Tough, that's tough to hear. Uh, thank you for the contribution, Amanda. Uh, we'll get back to you in a little bit. Uh, FIUJM, oh, John. John John is wondering, uh, as recruiting coordinator for many years, what do most recruits have in common about why they chose FIU? The city, the campus, the atmosphere, the coaches, et cetera. What do you see, what do you see as a common thread uh, with recruits? Um, I think it's a, a combination of, of everything. Um, obviously, I'm going to believe our coaching staff is one of the best in the country uh, just because of how we, how we treat the players when they come into the program and, and when they leave, they're set up for success because I'm a, I'm a product of that with Coach Davis, obviously being my college head coach. But I would say the city life. Um, you know, you're in one of the biggest – you know, populations in, in the world and best cities as far as, you know, location to the beach, location to, um, you know, having outside, you know, activities to do, going to the water and going on a boat. And, 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 you know, it's a vacation destination for a lot of folks. So a lot of kids, you know, that we, we have on our team either live here and were born and raised or they have family that, that, that vacations here. So you're, you're around family. Um, you're you're, you're going to be in a great spot to play football and to have a, a lot of fun doing it. And if I could do it again, you know, I would definitely think about Miami if I if they would have offered me or, or things like that. But, um, yeah, your alma mater did not offer me, by the way, AJ. But uh, not salty at all. Not salty at all. But, uh, no, it's, it's a great place to come to school. And I think we really have, you know, a trifecta of a great education, great coaches to be around, and a great experience to have outside of football. That's a good recruiting pitch from the recruiting coordinator. Well done there. Um, we have a, uh, let's see here as I'm searching in the mailbag. Oh, we have another contribution from Amanda Balionis, big friend of the program. Uh, she says, uh, Bryn, what is your favorite Backstreet Boys song? And can you perform oh my it for gosh. us? Oh my gosh. She's really, you know, nine months has been, a, been, been good to her because she's found out um, I'm a little bit weird. Love the Backstreet Boys, was a huge fan. I'm a 90s, I love 90s music. They were um, to answer her her second question, no, yes. I will not be performing it. To answer okay. her first question, it is I want it that way. And if bop, you catch bop. me at a karaoke, you, it's more of a live performance thing, Amanda. I'd agree with that. Um, yeah, yeah. I want it that way. So that's just a little bit. Yes, but I really yeah, got to get a taste into of it. it. I gotta. Yeah, yeah, it's just a little taste. When, when, we, when we celebrate a win um, post pandemic, we'll, oh, yeah. uh, we'll find a karaoke bar and Absolutely. we'll, we'll no, let that one it. rip. Uh, my karaoke yes. go to is No Air by Jordan Sparks, Chris Brown. But uh, oh that's, my god, that's a, love that that's a, song. Yeah, AJ? great duet. If you can find someone to duet god. with, it's it can lead to some special moments. Oh, um, that's phenomenal. Might, yeah, we might have to do. We might have to do that. Uh, we'll great Backstreet night. Boys yeah. song choice there. That uh, that will always be a bop. Very proud of that answer. Uh, we've got Eddie Hondal, friend of the program. Uh, Eddie. 
Bryn, and, and, the, and the young QBs vying for a starting spot, uh, do you see these young guns talent looking more like Alex Magoo or James Morgan? Uh, two high guys to, hold, to have a standard with, uh, but the quarterback battle is certainly going to be, be fun this year. But, but what do you see out of the guys so far? Certainly nothing's been determined. Yeah, I, I think, you know, through however many practices we've had, um, all of them bring something different, right? I think we all kind of understand that, you know, but I think they all bring a uniqueness to the game. And I think we're in good hands with whoever wins this. And I've obviously been in quarterback battles my entire, I thought like my entire life. So growing, I don't think quarterback, quarterback battles are ever finished, right? Because yeah. in actuality, you're going to have to play more than one. We've done that in the past year with playing, you know, James Christian Morgan James, and, Al yeah. and Christian Alexander. The first yeah. game we played in Indiana, Christian went in for the third series and had a great drive until, you know, he fumbled. I can remember that. And, so you're never going to – and Caitlin played last year. So I, and I guess this is my bias of playing the, to the position. You can never think you're never going to go in the game. So yeah. in my opinion, especially this year more than ever, you're going to have to rely on all three of those guys for potentially to go in the game and have some sort of role to help you win and be successful. And I think forever, as long as I'm coaching, I'll have that approach because I live that. And it's tough to wake up every day not knowing you're the starter, but it's also a bad feeling when you're when – you're, not named to start it when you're not prepared. Does that make sense? And, yeah. and I think that's, that's the approach that Coach Scrossi is going to give these guys. And, and they, they've done that. And he, Coach Scrossi does a great job with the quarterbacks. Yeah, uh, phenomenal. Yeah. And he's put two, two guys in the NFL. And, and he's done that, you know, in, throughout the course of his career. And so he's going to put those guys in a position to succeed. And ultimately, I think we're in great hands with whoever, whoever wants the job. So I hate having the political answer, uh, answer for you, Eddie. But if you come to practice or, or watch the games, I think we're in good hands. Uh, two more questions here for you, Bryn, as we wrap up. Uh, this one from Connor Delpreet, uh, sports anchor up in Savannah, went to Elon and a big Ravens guy. Uh, he okay. asked about your time before that, though. Did you or do you play as yourself in NCAA football 14? Ooh. Did I? Yes. Do I? <laughs> am I ashamed, ashamed to admit that? Yeah, as a 30-year-old man, yeah, I am. But the coolest experience, and I, I – I played in CA growing up. Vince Young, I played with Mike Vick. I played Madden. I played all the games. Yeah. I was a huge fan. And the coolest experience is when you're in the game. So uh, did my friends yell at me that I played with myself and would get my butt kicked still? So, yeah, it's myself. I'm a competitor. I think I can, I think I can play. But, uh, no, I, I did, and it's embarrassing to say. But, you know, it's, it's a really cool experience. So, humbly, I will say yes. But, they, uh, you know, they it, did you really cool I mean, in the game. You, I looked up the numbers. I saw that question. Oh, no. I looked up the numbers, man. Uh, I don't think you can complain. Uh, they have you as a 93 overall. Wow. You're, you're, wow. That's, that's senior season. Your speed rating is a 78. Uh, that's your highest, so accurate. Your highest <laughs> – I think they – I might have exaggerated that. I'm, you're, you're, speed. I'm, you're, like, you're, I'm like 60. Your awareness no, was 83. Like that was your highest Your Ooh. highest attribute was awareness. You know, quarterback, that, wow. that makes sense. 78 is respectable on the speed rating, and it's especially in 93. So I don't think you can complain about, was about that pre EA sports. Uh, was that pre or post double ankle surgery? I don't know. <laughs> they, 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 they must have they forgot to, to look that up. Day. Yeah. They, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that, Oh, that's, God. That's, hey, I'll, uh, I'll take all those ratings. I stunk. Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> that's you can't complain about that. Not, anytime you're 93, just play as yourself yeah. for, forever there on that game. There you go. I do think uh Coach Doug's played you guys during his national championship Ooh. run when he was with Tennessee. Did he really you guys, you guys got whipped? And I, I don't I don't know if it's it was the rosters from 14 or if he simulated uh, different names, but if you were the quarterback, you didn't have a good day. So I just wanted to make sure oh you're aware of that. Coach I gotta Doug's call Caleb then. Go, oh yeah, you got the you got the barstool stool. connection. Yeah, yeah, see if you were in that oh, game. God. I couldn't find a, yeah. a box score because it's a it's a video game and people don't care that much. They just want to just <laughs> see who, if Doug's wins. Yeah, no doubt. I can't give you your stats on that. Uh, final final question of the mailbag. And appreciate all our friends chiming in. Uh, mm -hmm. Really a huge fan, um, and, and that's why we're spotlighting her. Uh, this is Amanda Balionis. Uh, her I last inquiry. <laughs> Beach, I, in this, I want to see how you navigate this. Um, beach mm -hmm. vacation with your girlfriend or oh, 18 oh, no. holes or 18 holes of golf with your friends. Bryn, tread carefully oh, no. here. 
Tread carefully. Oh God. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. I'm gonna, there's there's I'm a correct answer story. and there, there's what you want to say. Okay. All right. So uh, this may or may not have happened. I won't say when it did. I won't. I'll just there. say there was, a, there was a there was um, a time. Wow. Um, <laughs> this isn't a time in my life now for you. No, 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 this is going downhill. So um, <clears throat> it's okay. There's a time. Oh, no. I'm a competitor. I will admit. I will you can't admit just that. keep. And you was, can't keep repeating. I'm a competitor. That that doesn't work for everything. That. <laughs> the AJ, I thought you had my back here, but no. Okay, so I am a competitor. So there was an opportunity presented uh, to me on a on a. Uh, I won't say when, but a Friday afternoon that I could maybe squeeze in 18 holes before I went to a beach vacation with Amanda and her family. Sure. And um, I may or may not have, have tried to sneak around that bush to, yes. uh, to get a couple holes in. But I will say this. I regret that decision 100%. So, <laughs> Amanda, I really do apologize. It was a terrible, terrible There we thing. go. That's it all she was probably looking for. It won't, it won't, it won't happen again in our relationship. It took me 24 <laughs> hours plus to get out of that, that hole. But to my defense, I played 12 holes and had so much guilt in my heart, AJ, that I had to get to the beach. You went 12 and before so, the guilt set in. Okay. Oh, I, and, I, and by the way, I was I was even through nine, so that's even that's even more. <laughs> oh, okay. Know, well, reason, then, yeah. If you're so. even and you left, then yeah. I think that's respectable, and and Absolutely. that should be taken into into consideration. Uh, yeah, Thank I was so told by thinking. by Man, Coach I'm Rodriguez sorry. that that this podcast had had to be a slow roast. There there had to be a roast throughout the course of this podcast. Oh yes. So I, I was just I doing my due diligence there. Uh, Amanda made sure yeah. that that we entertain that aspect as well to throw you under the bus a little bit all in good fun all in all in good spirits but uh correct answer there i'm glad i'm glad you navigated through that successfully (laughs) brent brent this was this has been fun man i've been looking forward to this hopefully hopefully we're uh we're on our way to virginia how far is lynchburg from from the hometown oh about three hours so okay. All right. That's, yeah, my, my, awesome. buddy, well, my buddies, well, my buddies there. usually come to my my buddies usually come to the ODU game or uh, yeah, we go to the game that's close. But I guess they can't come this year. Dang, that's, yeah, that's, that's sad to say, AJ. So yeah, we're gonna uh, play some football. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's the matter. Some some games will have fans. I know uh, Pete said we'll, we'll prioritize students at Ricardo this year. So hopefully, yeah. we can have some some FIU fam out of the cage. But man, appreciate the time. Uh, enjoy the yeah. stories. Uh, hopefully, we're playing football here soon in, in, in year four. Of, of, of you guys being here but uh no it's been a lot of fun thanks for coming on the pod man we appreciate hey, it aj aj you're the best in the business you already know that you don't get enough credit for what you do and how you support this program i mean that from top to bottom um, everything you do for covering us and and doing basketball and doing football man you know you know you're my, you're my brother for life so appreciate it man i yeah, appreciate that fam. just two two former acc guys having fun at fiu man just it's a, it's a blast no to doubt. be here and, and more, more good yes, times sir. to come all right that's Bryn renner on uh, next episode of the fiu podcast appreciate you tuning in it's been brought to you by cafe bustello friend of the program Bryn renner thanks for the time man appreciate it jake